Hello? Who's this? Wow. Michael from Miami. Michael. Wow. <laughs> Been a long time, I thought, Michael. I thought it was almost get disconnected there for a second because you went silent. Yeah, well, I'm back. Congratulations. Well, welcome. Well, greetings from the belly of the beast. Yeah. Where, uh, coronavirus lives and uh, polls are going on. Uh, okay, a couple quick things. Number one, it's not going to make any difference if there is a depressed voter turnout, which I think there will be because of the virus. I, I think that uh, having been up on the, the, what they call the Treasure Coast this past weekend, uh, people are going on about their business pretty normally, although the way things are going down here, every three days brings another cataclysmic shift like it is in everybody else, but right. we are especially feeling it. They're finally going to close the bars, the restaurants, take out only, uh, gyms are being closed, hospitals are now setting up potential drive-by testing facilities, but they're still not going to be able to get it done for at least another month. They are able to go ahead and turn around the test at one specific hospital chain within a couple of hours because they have labs on site, but most of the other hospital chains down here don't have that kind of access, at least not yet. And, of course, the big bugaboo is you can't get tested unless your personal physician says that you meet certain criteria. It's not like you just walk in there and go, hey, you know, fire me up here. It's not, it doesn't work that way. Because they don't have many so, tests. Well, they're getting better. Yes, you're right. They're, they're horrifically behind, and we can spend – and I think you hit the nail on the head earlier in the show. I think you talked about the, uh, the uh, privatization or the uh, attempt to monetize the tests, right? I think that's got to right? be what it is. I mean, nobody, exactly. nobody has – Nobody, idiot. Well, five, of course, that's what they did. They looked at the WHO results. They realized they couldn't touch it because it's already essentially a, a printed brand. They couldn't, they couldn't expand on it. So they said, no, nah, we'll get our own. And in doing so, they cost us a valuable six weeks, which we may never get back. Anyway, um, a lot of things are upside down here. Uh, otherwise, I've got two staff members having to stay home because when schools close, guess what happens to their child care? Right. It disappears. Those people have to stay home. So I've got to figure out a way as a small businessman to keep them on salary, keep them functioning, keep money and, and, and you know, somehow revenues in place so that I can continue to do business while at the same time serving my clients. And, you know, I'd be interested because I know you have other attorneys who are, who are, and I consider you a friend of the show, okay? Maybe I'm being presumptuous, but I do. I'm, uh, you consider me you a friend of the show? Of the show I appreciate that. Situ- yeah, I, I think you have other people who are similarly situated. I think – uh, the immigration attorney out of Washington State, right? Ronald he, Reagan, he, yes. Yeah, he's right in the middle of it too. So I mean, you do what you can. And you and can, we should say we should say what's going on with ICE. Like they are they. I mean, it feels anecdotally, at least from what he's going through, that they are that that, and he's got friends who are attorneys too, who whose clients they. they it, it feels like they are. At the very least, at the very least, being incredibly negligent, and in some instances, like just willfully, willfully negligent. In terms of what? In terms, in terms of, of exposing, exposing, um, oh, uh, yeah. well, immigrants to this. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We are. We have a rule now. Um, I, I handle a lot of injured workers. Okay, in my practice, and they like to come by and drop by. They just do, and and that's one of the reasons my clients have my cell phone number and they have a chance to recontact me all the time. The problem with access is that while it gives them a certain amount of peace of mind, they also take it upon themselves to just drop in. And normally that isn't a problem. It's a bit of a hassle, but you handle it because that's what you have staff for. But they can't do that now. And I had to have a contact and conversation with a couple of them who come by and they're freaked out because they can't get their medical care, the bills aren't being paid. And, and comp clients are much more needy than regular personal injury clients. They just are because of the nature of the injury and the nature of the benefits, or lack thereof, especially down here. So they come by, and you have to tell them, look, n- nothing. Nothing goes on here. I've had to have conversations with defense attorneys and say, look, my clients will appear for your depositions, but only by phone, or you can Skype. And there's been not a lot of pushback, but most of the uh, administrative law judges have agreed that that makes sense. The ironic part is state courts in, the, in our area are shut down for two weeks. But the administrative law judges are still open, at least in Why? name only. I mean, they can still conduct business, but only by phone. So everybody's making as many adjustments as possible to try to minimize in-person contact. Uh, I've had to, like I said, I'm having my people work from home. A lot of the insurance companies are work, having their people work from home, as are the defense attorneys. It's, it's a domino effect, Sam. Yeah. It literally is a domino effect that starts from the head and goes all the way to the tail. Uh, Michael, what is your sense of like, do you think this is going to, uh, the, that the, it's your sense that the, um, 
the coronavirus will not implicate the primary results? It'll, okay, my answer to that question is it'll implicate turnout, not outcome. Okay. Because Biden's going to win by, instead of winning by 35, he'll win by, what, 18. Okay. It's not in doubt. I'm sorry to say this to you. And the last time I actually attempted to call the show, Michael and uh, Brendan gave me the, the stiff arm and basically told me to, that I was you know, an old guy who didn't know what the hell he was talking about. They didn't well, that's that true. Way, but their, their implication was clear that their advocacy was clouding their judgment, my opinion. Bernie Inter- Sanders' uh, ideas in Florida? are outstanding. I support them. I do. I think the majority of the people in this country support the fight for 15 and expanded medical care coverage and make sure that there's some type of equality when it comes to income distribution. But he's the wrong vessel to deliver that message. It's true in my state, I can tell you for a fact, and that was even before the Castro comments. So when he's down by 35 points by every reputable poll in the state, the outcome will not be changed. He may lose 47 29 instead of 55 to 18 or something. I mean, that, that's, how, that's how big the discrepancy was. The bad news is this. My state is also unfortunately trending horribly Republican, and Trump beats both Biden and Sanders by at least seven points. Now, he beats Biden by two to three. Right. He beats Bernie by seven so far. Well, I, I mean, I think full. I think the ship has sailed in terms of Florida, to be no, honest. No, well, no, no. And here's what I'm going to – now, I disagree with you on this, and I'm more of an optimist about this, okay? Now, you know I have a kid about the Obama stuff, and I've sent you grapefruits and lost bets and won bets and blah, blah, blah. But this state – California right, grapefruits. Yeah, Obama carried this state twice. You sent me California okay, grapefruits. Now, it did happen. Okay, 2008 was an exception because of the economy. But he won 2012 straight away, okay? And I think with the right candidate, I know you're not going to like to hear this, and I have arguments with my progressive friends all over the country about this. Biden stands a better chance of winning my state for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is he appears to be less threatening, he's less bombastic, and more palatable, for lack of a better term, I mean, than Bernie does. You know, I mean, the, 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 the bottom line is, is, like, we have the data now, and older people— uh, reject Sanders. Younger people reject Biden. And the fact is, is that right. older people come out and vote in significantly more numbers than younger people. I mean, that's it's yes. as simple as that. Do you remember your great analogy about fishing in different ponds you used earlier in the year? I think you made a reference to it, that the way to win this election was to not fish in the same pond, but you had to fish in different ponds. I think that was a rough approximation of what you said, right? Yeah, something, something like that. to that effect. Right. Well, the problem with that is there has to be fish in the pond that you're trying to catch. Well, that's right. And the people you, and the people you want to get to come to the polls, they don't vote. They don't vote. They talk. They go to rallies. They get on blogs. They don't vote. I don't know why. I mean, I've, you know, I've heard a couple of theories. I can't explain I, I've heard a it's couple a of theories life. about it. That, that, that part of it is just that, like, A, um, in fact, Jamel Bowie wrote a piece, I think, in the Times about this the other day. A, I think... The first time you do something, it's always more intimidating, right? I mean, in, no matter what it is you do. And the first Maybe. couple of times you Maybe. do it, and it's intimidating, even if it's not something that, you know, the third or fourth time you do it, it's uh, not intimidating. The other thing is, is that there have been a tremendous amount of obstacles that are also uh, set up to prevent young people from voting. That's uh, true, recently. And, and that is true, especially yeah. when you have those nonsensical laws about not accepting student IDs but accepting gun licenses. And closing, and closing uh, polling places in colleges, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, but the problem is this goes back, okay, I'm going to pull the okay older boomer thing. I've been covering elections since I was 16, 20 years old, okay? And I can remember the cry and the complaints and the problems about young people not voting going back to 1980, yep. 1984. This has yep. been going on for from time immemorial. And my theory on that is pretty simple. When you're younger, you don't have as much at stake. Now, you do now because of climate change and a lot of the things that are more, you know, exacting in terms of being uh, an ex- existential threat. But you don't own property. You don't have kids. I You're disagree. not invested in the school system. I you don't, don't think know that's about the what tax it is. structure. You really don't care too much about what goes on in your state and local government because it doesn't affect you except maybe they close the bars down early. I don't, I don't mean to be a whole I don't think that's what it is. I don't audience. think that's what it is. I'll tell you that's something. That's not your audience, but yeah. that's the audience. Uh, I'll tell you something, Michael, 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 I would argue that if you started, uh, if you allowed, and I'm not saying that we should, uh, but if you allowed people to vote at age 16, I would bet you 
that by the time that they're 20, the rates for 20-year-olds voting would be significantly higher. As I would say in deposition, what's the factual basis for that statement? Um, well, what's the factual basis? I mean, you're trying to argue that they're not in- invested in it, but at the same time you say that uh, because of climate change that they're, uh, they're very invested in it. I, mean, I said they're cha- it's changing. There's no, it hasn't changed. But, but the it's thing is, you don't see that in the numbers. I mean, so, like, the, the, um, the, the, the fact is that I think that, like, at that age— When it's the first time for you to vote, you don't feel the same confidence that you do the second time you vote. It takes a while for people to get used to the idea. I think it's a confidence issue. I think it's just a caring issue. Now, now look, Greta Thunberg and the rest of that generation, it's different from when I was 16. It's different when you were 16. It's just a different world. Everybody knows that. I get that. And we're far more plugged in and far more wired in information and informational sources than we did before. But the problem is, I don't see it still being a compelling reason for people to go to the polls. Well, if you I ask mean, an average I, I, 17 year old, 18 year old, hey, what do you want to do this Tuesday? It's either cruise the beach or go vote or canvas neighborhoods. I got news for you, and you know what the answer is going to be. Well, and that's not to say that you don't have a valid point. It's hard to change habits until you have something at stake. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, 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 I mean, I think there probably is something to that, but I also think it's a, it's a question of like, of, of making it easier for younger people to vote because as you get older you just realize like there's nothing that's that you know these type of things are just not that challenging and you 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 realize that like the the it's just not that hard to do and you know it's it's both sides of the equation i guess is my point and we could make it hard to do or important to do well look but no, there's a difference. But 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 that's those are two different sides of the same you know of the same equation, right? Like you're always making an assessment. What's the opportunity cost? What's you know how much of an effort do I have to you know? Uh, I'm going to climb this hill. Well, I'm going to climb it because there's stuff at the top of the hill I want, and uh, and I, I I weigh that against of like it's not a very steep climb, and if it's like not a steep climb at all, then what I'm climbing for doesn't have to be so great. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, there's it's on both ends of the uh, the, the equation. But let's that presumes I want to climb a hill in the first place. But that's another argument. Listen, well, I have here, and since we haven't talked in a while, I got to ask you a couple quick things. My state is in play if, and I know you don't want to hear this, but if Biden is the nominee, how much of how much firepower is the progressive left going to really put into getting rid of this guy in the White House? Because it can be done. But it can't be done with a half-assed effort. They have to make sure they commit to putting the resources into the ground game to be able to get the people out to vote. Because the one thing you're dead on about is this has nothing to do with ideology. It has nothing to do – and this is what I think you guys have been missing the point on when it comes to Biden versus Sanders. Your points in, a, in an intellectual debate are absolutely spot on, but they don't matter. The majority of the country wants this guy gone. Oh, no, I Go agree. Away. I agree. I think that's been clear. They, they I, I think – I Wait, think that's been that's been Biden. that's been clear that's been clear with the data. Like the, you have sixty five percent of the people coming out telling um, you know exit pollsters, I'm voting not based upon uh, you know my ideology or the ideas of this guy. I'm voting based upon my perception he can win, and that uh, perception was basically um, uh, created by having all of the people who ran against him come out and endorse him. So if the question is, like, do I anticipate if Biden is the nominee that AOC will go down to Florida and um, and hold and work Broward County and work Palm Beach County and work Orlando? She better. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why she will. I'll tell you why she will. I'll tell you why she will. Even significant to get to get this guy out of here. I'll tell you she's why she will, because she's going to be talking to voters that hopefully she'll see in 12 years. I understand that. But we, how about you? You're yourself. You're a perfect example. You went door-to-door out in Worcester to go ahead and canvass on the Massachusetts primary, okay? I wish you'd done it in Wisconsin because I think it had been a little bit more illustrative for you. But okay, it's, it was a, it was a well, good, I'm from Worcester. You know, good effort. Well, I'm, only because it's a swing state that's going to decide the election. That's all. But my point is, you know, are you going to put devote the resources of the show and just go four square into it? Or are you still going to be a little pissed off that they turned around and said, hey, Bernie, no, sorry, we're not into your ideas. Even though in your, eye, in your eyes, Joe Biden's lost his fastball. By the way, in my eyes as well. I well, think everybody's so eyes. But everybody's that eyes. That doesn't matter anymore. Well, I know. I, I think with coronavirus, frankly, I think, that, um, I think that's been the, the great equalizer. I mean, my sense of Biden's chance of winning 
three weeks ago is very different than it is today. Really? Oh, without really a doubt. So? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, look, no, we're going to have. We're I gonna... think that whoever had a D behind their name was going to have an equal. Because the 2018 elections proved that. Get a D behind your name, and you have a puncher's chance better than that of beating this guy. Well, because but, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. But here's the thing. Biden, this, here, Michael, here's the thing. The here, Michael, this guy Michael, is so I agree with you. It doesn't matter. I agree with Just you. Get him to the pool. I agree with you. Michael, against him, do people with. hear me on the phone? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. I'm All right, sorry. everybody's Go getting ahead. very yes. impassioned. But the— um, You're my friend. I haven't the, talked to you in six months. I know. It's been a long time. You sent me You sent me California grapefruits. Let, but let me— but, I know. I got it. Not Florida grapefruits. Yeah. I was not looking for California. I was not looking for California grapefruits from the guy the from Florida. But listen, but Go here's ahead, the point. Listening. You're talking about you, you. You nailed it right on the head. A generic D is going to win. The problem is, is that in and and this was three weeks ago. I think, frankly, the economy is going to be in the crapper, and I think people are going to be aware that Donald Trump screwed this uh, coronavirus thing up. You know. There's a lot of other you know, questions about the election, but I think that you know, we're already starting to see this. I think he's going to have real problems. Like, I think the, you know, they've already, let me put it this way. They canceled the subpoenas for the Bidens. Yeah, I saw that. Two weeks ago. Okay? And but they you did, know why they did that, right? Uh, well, they were the, going to depose Ivanka, too. Yeah, well, the house was ready to go with those subpoenas for Ivanka and and, and Don Jr. And they I were think, ready to go. And I think the other problem was, frankly, is that they this this became a problem that there's no way to go down there. Like Donald Trump is going to get up there now and talk about uh, Burisma and this and that, and people are going to be like, "Excuse they me, don't care. It doesn't listen, that, yeah, exactly. how many people? How many what people? You, what, what is Burisma? Need, is, that, is that something you get at Starbucks? They're not going to care about. No, that, no, so. no, no, no. Listen, the one thing he had Michael, that was his how did Hillary Clinton lose? How did Hillary Clinton lose? You know damn well. Well, you know, there's a couple of reasons. That's, not, that's, that's a multi-texted answer, but I'll right. give you the fast version. One, the Comey letter. Two, she got lazy and she's a lousy retail politician. And three, she had horrible advice. Plus, right. she has 25 years of hatred and history built in against her, which is institutionally baked into the true, election. True, true, true. Listen, that's, I think the odds are that Donald Trump is going to lose. But in terms of, and this again was a three-week-old assessment. Joe Biden, if you wanted to take, if you wanted to, if you wanted to to knock off some voters in Wisconsin and in, Mich- in Michigan and in Pennsylvania, and zeroing in, I, it's not Donald Trump saying this stuff. It's just going to be, you know, targeted Facebook ads. It's going to be, um, if you wanted to make this argument that this guy is corrupt, that this guy is, um, you know. Uh, is going to cut. Guy? It's Biden okay. is going to cut your Social Security. I mean, the the Donald Trump was going to run to the left of Joe Biden. I don't on think trade, it's that's a problem on yeah, trade in Michigan. And Wish- yes. So so my point is is that I think a lot of that is an analysis that is three weeks old. The world has changed dramatically in three weeks. But and and like I say, now I'm I'm you know, more confident that anybody, and I've been saying for, you know, I've been saying for a long time, like a soup can, um, I would vote for a soup can over Donald exactly. Trump. Um, you can put a stick to your, and put a D on his head and he would win. Look, I know you got to go, but I want to throw one more thing out here that I know is going to be unpopular, but it's got to be said. If you want to win back the industrial Midwest, if you want to get back to the, to the, to the trade issue and win it, Joe Biden has got to pick only one person for that VP candidate, and I think you'll just, you'll agree with me on this. And you're going to have to go twist his arm to do it, but you got Sherrod to go get Sherrod Brown. Brown. You put Sherrod Brown on the ticket, and you can win this election, and you can probably win it with a little room to spare. If he goes with what that idiot Chuck Schumer wants to do and picks Kamala Harris or picks Del- Val Demings out of Orlando, who was on the impeachment manager committee, yeah. or picks Stacey Abrams, this election is lost. Well, wait a second. You that just that told me that Joe gone. Biden was going to win. What? I'm sorry? You just told me that Joe Biden was going to win. I said, if you want to guarantee, well, it's close to a guarantee as possible. Well, wait a second, Michael. You've changed your tune. First of all, they're no, never no, going to no, pick, no, they're no, never, no. listen, well, no, no. they're never going to yes, pick Sher- Sherrod Brown. Under, they're they're Sherrod never going to pick Sherrod Brown. Likely, Sherrod Brown, probably. if you do that, you're jeopardizing the Senate, and, you're not, and they're not going to do it. Sorry. You know what? 
the Senate's important. The White House is more important. You saw the story in the New York Times hey, about dude, the pressuring. He judges. just committed to Have having a woman. Did you not see Listen the debate? Did you see I'm, the debate? I'm, I'm, I'm as egalitarian as they come. Did you You're see the debate? He, those, it's over. Those, those, it's over. He's going to have to pick a woman. If he doesn't pick a woman. Who says? Says who? Joe says Biden. Who? He said it in the tell debate. Me some, tell me somebody who's better than Sherrod Brown on the issue. He you and I said do. it in the debate. It's over. Your boy blew it. I know. According to you. My boy. I, 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 I vote for Caligula against Trump. Please, oh, you know God. better than that. Yes, Jesus. Tell me God. who's better. I, I know what he I gotta said. Go. I got to go. You know as well as I, I got to go. Politics are fluid. I got to go. They're fluid. Maybe you got to call in more often. I can't get through. You're too damn popular. All right. Talk to you later. Michael, it was a pleasure. Uh, well, hey, listen, one quick question. Is the audio what? on the website ever going to come back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll work on it. We're working on it. Be good. Be Hopefully safe. in the next day Take or care two. Yourself. All right, you Proud too. Proud of you. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> I like that. Joe Biden's going to white. They'll vote for anybody. But if he picks uh, Kamala Harris, he's going to lose. I don't know.